Pedro Aceves, uh, Senior Solutions Architect at AWS. Hi, uh, Dimitri Rusteno, also Senior Solutions Architect at AWS. All right, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, a project we recently open sourced that allows you to run, deploy self-managed XRPL nodes on AWS. Uh, why AWS, some of the benefits of running on AWS, and you know the Node Runners project. So. Awesome. So why AWS? Um, AWS has been a pioneer in the Web3 space as far as cloud providers. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you are already running uh, parts of your application on AWS. Uh, so it would make sense that you would want uh, any blockchain nodes that you connect to uh, to be as close to that application as possible. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. Um, so we have uh, worked on this project called uh, AWS Blockchain Node Runners. Uh, and this will allow you to deploy nodes easily and uh, really benefit from that lower latency. And, uh, and you're able to keep the network traffic secure by keeping it all within uh, the AWS traffic. Uh, we also have a big Web3 team, um, specialists to help support you. Uh, go-to-market strategies um, that we can work with you on uh, and different growth opportunities. And I'll, I'll touch on that in the next slide. Um, we also have our developer tooling that you might be familiar with, our infrastructure. We have Web3 services, integrations, published patterns, um, and all of that stuff to help you be as successful as possible in the cloud. Uh, Here's kind of a little bit of an overwhelming slide of all these uh, points. So uh, we understand that navigating uh, all of the different programs uh, at AWS can be a little bit complex. Um, this is to show that we have resources available to you uh, no matter where in your journey you are, uh, from startup to enterprise, uh, you know, individual developer. Uh, there are resources to help you along the way. Um, we can help direct you to those resources. Um, you know, we, uh, we can learn about your projects. We're excited to work with you all. So please uh, come chat with us. Uh, you know, get involved with your, your AWS team that supports you. Uh, and then we have the widest global infrastructure uh, of any cloud provider. We have 37 regions, uh, 117 availability zones. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, we have other deployment methods as well. Uh, we have local zones, which deploy a subset of services. Uh, we have AWS Wavelength, which uh, utilizes 5G. Uh, we have Outposts, if you want to run AWS services uh, locally on-premise, uh, that's an option there. So really, no matter your data residency requirements or your um, latency requirements, uh, we have deployment models that can most likely uh, fit your use cases. We talked about this uh, Node Runners project. I'm sure you're wondering what it is. Um, so really it's aimed at um, people who want to run their own node um, and self-manage it, right? So we uh, open sourced this project. It's based off of, um, it's written in AWS CDK. So for those that don't know, CDK is our infrastructure as code framework. Um, it's if you're familiar with other frameworks, like we have CloudFormation, um, there's Terraform's probably the, the uh, popular one. CDK is a little more uh, higher level, so it uses higher level pro programming languages like Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, .NET, um, and Java. So TypeScript's the native language, and it'll transpile to kind of all down to all these from all these other languages to these. Um, this project's written in TypeScript. Um, so this is kind of the key of like what makes this a really simple sort of thing to d just clone from GitHub and then deploy. Um, so the project itself is pretty modular. It supports um, XRPL is kind of what we're going to be looking at here today. But in addition to that, we support about 12 other chains. Um, so if you, if you need to deploy a, any of those other changes, there's two. Um, one of the benefits here, again, is is it publishes um, a lot of metrics out into CloudWatch, which is our logging and metric service. Um, in this particular case, it'll you know 
the typical stuff, CPU, disk usage, um, all those sort of things. But you can also write custom uh, metrics that you can push out to the dashboard. Uh, and the project to here that we have, the example that is pushing out a custom metric, is the last validated ledger. Finally, it also follows um, best practices from AWS. Uh, so you know our well-architected framework, right? Like keeping things private that need to be private, scoping down permissions. Uh, for example, there's no SSH access to the node to if you need to get on it and manage it. Um, so there's no SSH key management. We use our SSM service that allows you to get on it without having to use any key, uh, S manage SSH keys or things like that. Um, the project deploys two versions of the node. There's a single node. Um, well, let me tell you how actually it's pretty simple to do this, right? So it takes about five minutes to do the single node. Um, and it's about five steps, maybe one or two more, right? So depending on if you, know, if you count the stuff like change directory, right? Um, but really what you need to do here, the key here is to edit the environment file that kind of specifies some of the basic things. Um, you need to specify the account ID that you want to deploy into, the region you want to deploy into. And there's other um, node specifics that you, you can configure as well. So the instance type. Um, it's set up with what we feel would be the best sort of instance to run this in, in production at a you know moderate load. Um, but if you're going to experiment like on your own, you just need a node to kind of develop your app against, I'd suggest that you you know change that instance down to like one of our T3 series uh, just for expense costs and those sort of things. Um, so what does this look like? So the single node deployment is really just going to be a single EC2 instance in a public subnet that exposes only the necessary ports for the node to be able to sync on the network. Your DAP here or your applications that you're running would be uh, deployed on the private node, which are isolated from the internet, right? And it interacts with the node um, to get ledger data or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, again, we have the, the CloudWatch metrics here that get published um, from the node uh, that you're able to do. On the high availability side or the, the other version that you can deploy, um, it's essentially the same thing, but you're deploying two nodes across two availability zones. So for, for those that don't know, the availability zones stink two data centers, right? So if one of those goes down, um, you have another one available in the other data center. Uh, so both of these nodes are behind the load balancer. Your application would talk to the load balancer, right? And that way, traffic gets sent to either node, and it's always available. These are also actually deployed in an auto-scaling group. So when one of those nodes goes down and gets detected, it'll be killed off, and then a new one will be brought up in its place. So you always have that. Um, All right, so. so I talked about the metrics and dashboard. Here's an example of um, the dashboard that comes with the project, right? So you'll see the usual stuff, right? So this was kind of right when it was initially starting to sync. You see the CPU ramps up. And then you see over here, for example, uh, the storage read I.O. Uh, is a good example. It just kind of drops off the cliff. That's probably where it's already been synced and it's caught up. And then the top right corner um, would be the last uh, validated ledger that it's showing you. So this just gives you a good way to go in and kind of at a glance take a look at the health of the node, um, give you an idea if you know, are you running low on disk space, or if you do play with the instance types, for example, it's a good way to come here to check, like, hey, what's that CPU utilization like? Um, and you know, it's just a good place to kind of get everything at a glance. Well, that's it. If you're interested, um, the project is open source. Um, you can find it on GitHub. We welcome contributions. As we've seen today, right, there's a lot of changes going into the ecosystem. A lot of stuff to keep up with, so we welcome contributions uh, to the XRPL node runner itself, but also just the project in general if you have any other contributions you want to make. Thank you.